guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today we have a really, at least for me, fun one. I love tag videos and this is the My Nail Polish Collection tag which I saw Nicole Loves Nails do and I was like, well I want to do that too, Nicole. So I watched her video and then I got all the questions and here we are filming this video. So I'm going to go through its 10 questions and then also at the end, I have been getting a few DMs recently about a mark on my hand and I figured, you know what, I'll, get, I'll unlock some Hillary lore for you. So at the end, if you want to stick around, I will tell you what that weird mark on my thumb is and no, it's not pen, okay? We'll talk about it. And I'll also show you some cringy pictures, so you'll want to stay. But yeah, let's get into the tag. So question number one is how many nail polishes do you own? Now, up until like two, three months ago, I probably could have answered this like just like that because I keep a very detailed spreadsheet. And so it's really easy for me to just open the spreadsheet and be like, I have this many. However, I, I haven't been putting stuff in the spreadsheet. Now I know what I've got to put in the spreadsheet because I can just look at the videos of my haul because I tell you guys everything I get and then I can just in input it. I just haven't made the time. So What's on my spreadsheet is 2,309 polishes. However, it's definitely more than that. I would say we're probably in the 2,500 range at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I I wish that I had like the on the dot answer for you guys, but it's, it's more than 2,309. I mean, I literally just got some polish in today. So <laughs> um, it's a lot. I am currently working on de-stashing, although those polishes are not officially de-stashed, they're in the purgatory bin. So the number is gonna go up because I gotta add all the polishes that I recently purchased in the past few months in, and then it's probably gonna go down after I finalize my de-stash. So, you know, we'll probably be back around the 2300 mark. Question number two is, what is the first nail polish you remember buying? And I feel like I have three separate eras where I remember the first nail polish I bought. So my first time really buying my own nail polish, I was in high school, my little sister wanted to go to Ulta, so we went and I bought a Crackle nail polish because I didn't wear makeup in middle school, high school, most of college. I, I started wearing makeup when I was like 23. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I'll wear makeup now. I just don't, I'm not wearing makeup now. I just don't care that much. I don't know. It just seems like a lot of work to get up earlier to put makeup on my face. I like makeup. That's the thing. I think it's fun to put on. I like the process. Why am I talking about makeup? Anyways. Uh, yeah. So the first time I remember buying a polish, it was a crackle polish. And then I just kind of fell off. And then when I was studying abroad, I wanted to paint my nails. And so I went to a store in Japan. I don't even remember what store. And I bought a black nail polish. And again, I don't, I don't even remember the brand. I, I think that... No, I, I don't remember, but it was just a small black nail polish. And then I was wearing black nail polish for like six months and that's it. And then finally, later in college, I remember like I had a coworker who she was pretty into nail polish. And then I started kind of watching nail polish videos on YouTube. And I got a magazine that was talking about how Essie was bringing back this shade that used to have like real diamond dust in it. So I told Rob, I was like, we got to go to the store. I got to check this out. I, I like, I didn't know that there were rare nail polishes. How is that a thing? Of course, now I know all about rare nail polish. And so I picked up, it was like champagne bubbly or something like that. I don't know. That one's ugly. And then Starry Starry Night, which was this one that used to have diamond dust in it. It was like this deep blue jelly. Now they just make it with silver glitter. I hated them both, <laughs> but those were like the first polishes I bought that start the collection that sits all around me now. Number three, what is the most recent nail polish you added to your collection? Well, I just got some PR from Starly and it was the entire collection for their like winter release. And it's like 12 polishes or something. It was huge. It was a big collection. So I would say those. And I'm excited to play with them. My break is coming up. My office closes for Christmas and New Year's. So after I'm filming this on the 21st, tomorrow's the 22nd. And then after that workday, I don't go back to work until the 4th. I'm excited to just 
not go anywhere. So I'm going to be playing with a lot of nail polish. What is your, oh, I didn't answer this in my, I, I, I guess I skipped this question. What is your least favorite nail polish that you own? That's really hard. Wait, no, it's not. Nails Ink Fruit Loop Collection. The entire collection. I hated it. I was so mad. They don't smell like Fruit Loops at all. I'm still bitter. I'm so mad about it. Nails Ink, I'm watching you. What is your rarest nail polish? Okay, this one was hard because I have three that I can think of off the top of my head that I feel like are like rare polishes. Number one would be China Glaze Zombie Zest. I got a bottle of that just in a random D stash and like that was shocking. Um, and that's kind of like a, a long time lemming for a lot of people. I wish they would bring it back so that we could have it, I don't know. So that one is pretty rare. I also have Max Factor Fantasy Fire, the OG version, which has UP in it, which if you don't know what UP is, it means Unicorn P, which I hate. I hate that people decided to name it that. I don't know. It's just so gross. Like, it's just, it's a type of like shimmer pigment that was discontinued and, or I don't even know if it was discontinued, but it was like, they didn't make it for like mass sale anymore. I don't know if somebody like bought like exclusive rights to it or what, why that happened, I can't recall, but like there's like a Clarins polish that had it in it that was like really famous. And I heard that this is kind of like a dupe for that. Some people get this pigment in small quantities and make like limited releases. Although as time goes on, I trust that less and less because I'm just like, how are people still finding this? Like if this was discontinued as, as you say, how are you still finding it? Okay, like, I don't know. But yeah, I have the OG version, so I'm sure that that one's fairly rare. And then Chanel Holographic is one that I believe was only released in Europe. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But yeah, I that, that one is also, I think, fairly rare. What is your most expensive nail polish? So I'll give you two. I'll give you one that I bought and one that was gifted to me. So the most expensive nail polish I bought was the Christian Louboutin like red and that was a $50 nail polish and it's a little bit absurd to pay $50 for a nail polish I know but it's funny it's the funniest $50 I ever spent like it's just such a stupid polish it's like the spike on that thing every time I'm like that's gonna poke my eye out so that's the most expensive polish that I personally bought but the most expensive polish that I own was a gift to me from Rob I think for an anniversary and it was that Chanel holographic. And I know that he spent more than $200, $200 on that polish. It, I it just, he had to have because I looked it up on eBay after he bought it for me. And I was like, Robert, these are expensive. So that one gets worn very infrequently. It's very pretty. Maybe if I ever get married, I'll wear that on my wedding day. How about that? That would be kind of cool, right? The most expensive polish on my wedding day. Question number seven is what brand do you own the most of? And I will tell you like my top four because these are the only ones that I have over a hundred polishes in. So the brand that I own the absolute most of is China Glaze. Uh, on my list, it says I have 179, but I know that I have even more than that because I've gotten some in PR since I updated my list. China Glaze, I just have a lot of. They're really accessible price-wise, and I used to buy a ton of their collections off of like kind of like wholesale websites, so the bottles were even cheap. They were like $2 a bottle. Crazy cheap. And now I'm on their PR list, so, and it has, it's, I've only gotten like three collections in PR, so it's not like getting PR from China Glaze has blown my collection up at this point. I bought almost all of those China Glaze myself. So you know that they're a fave for me. I love China Glaze. And then my next highest is Orly. I have 173, so they're a close second. Orly, I would say, it's kind of like half and half. I bought a lot of my own Orly's and I really like Orly as a brand. I was paying for ColourPass for a really long time. 
but then I got on their PR list. So then I was getting polishes in PR as well. So it's kind of like half because I bought a ton because I love the brand and half because I get a lot from them because I'm on their list. So, you know, it's a good balance there, I'd say. But China Glaze, China Glaze, I just was like, I'll buy them all. Zoya, I have 158 polishes and actually that number would be higher too because I bought, I bought some recently. Actually, no, I was like, I was like, is that higher than my Orly? No, I don't think so. But I did buy some Zoyas recently, so that number would be a little bit higher. I have no excuse for Zoya. I've never gotten PR from Zoya. I bought all those myself. <laughs> I shop their sales religiously. Uh, not lately as much, just because I have... I have 158 Zoyas. There's no more Zoyas for me to buy. I just, I buy a lot of Zoyas. Um, but yeah, the, I, I buy them when they're on sale. So then they're just easier to buy more of. And then the last brand I have over 100 of is Hello Taco. And I have 137 of those. Probably actually 139 because I'm pretty sure I bought two recently. Two, only two. But yeah. And then, then everything else is under 100. Easy peasy. So then what color do you have the most of? Again, like I said, I haven't updated my sheet in a couple months. And another thing, I think a lot of people don't trust my classification of colors. Apparently I don't interpret color the same way as the rest of the world. And I mislabel a lot of colors. So if you trust my classification of the colors, uh, I have the most purple, which was not surprising to me. I am like three inches away from becoming one of those weird purple people that everything in my home is purple. So that was not a surprise. I have 412 purples. That's a, that's a crazy number to say out loud. And then sh just, just below that, blue 406 blues which i just i i love blue polish i don't know what it is that it gets me it just sucks me in i don't think there's a shade of blue that i won't wear there are shades of purple i won't wear i don't really love royal purples that much i like brighter purples and i don't like like these like wisteria looking purples that are almost like pink i don't like those I have very specific purples that I like. Blue, I'll wear any blue, any blue. I don't know what it is, but I just love every blue that ever existed. And then coming in third place is green, which that's just a development in the past couple of years. My greens consumption has skyrocketed and I have 341 greens. I actually thought pink would be higher, but it's not. So green is slowly closing the gap and they're all gross looking. Number nine is which polish in your collection means the most to you. So I have two that I feel like are pretty significant. So the first one is this set of polishes that Rob picked me up when we were in college, you know, back when we didn't have a lot of money, he had gone to Meyer to get groceries or something. And he told me, he's like, I always go to the nail polish aisle, even when you're not with me, when I go to the grocery store, because it makes me think of you. And so he was there and he saw these color changing polishes. They were thermal polishes. And he had heard me talk about them recently about how I had wanted thermals, but all the indie brands, you know, they were just out of my price range at that point. And he saw those and he picked them up and he got a card because he's, he loves greeting cards. And he wrote like a nice little note. And when I came home that day, they were just sitting on my desk and he's not a big spontaneous gesture kind of guy. You know, he does, he does a lot for me in like a lot of aspects of our life, but he doesn't usually just like buy gifts. His family's just not a big gift family. And so like that meant a lot to me because I'm a big, I come from a gift family, like giving gifts, receiving gifts. That's like a big thing for me. And for him, it's more like acts of service. I guess if you're going to go by love languages, which I'm like, eh, I don't care about that. But I know for some people that stuff's really significant and his family's more like acts of service. And so when he does like go out of his way to get a like surprise gift, it was, it was just really sweet. So those 
They have long since stopped changing color, but I will not get rid of them. I just, they mean a lot to me. And then the other polish that is really, you know, it means a lot to me in my collection is a Grandpa's Garden. And it like, I'm not gonna get emotional when I talk about this. Um, it reminds me of my grandparents and, you know, my granddad specifically. And I, especially recently, you know, like holidays, my, both my grandparents are sick and they're sick and so it makes me sad but you know like they used to like my grandma had this really big garden in the backyard and she would grow vegetables and she would can stuff and my granddad he would always help her in the garden and in the yard and he was just always he's like I'm right there honey I'll be right there honey and uh, like he's got this accent from like the east coast and it's just really cute but it just reminded me of being a kid with my siblings playing in their backyard while my grandparents gardened and so like to me that's like a really important polish and the maker whose grandfather this was kind of based off of posted the picture at the time of releasing this polish and polish pickup and it was just it was a beautiful picture of just an elderly man sitting in his garden just clearly in his element and it was just such a sweet picture and it reminded me of my own grandparents and so I that polish is one that I will hang on to like I'll hang on to the bottle even after the polish itself is long gone just for the sentimental value of it and then question number 10 is what is your go-to nail polish right now and I was like is this a real question <laughs> like what, what? <laughs> go-to do people have go-to polishes I sure don't I I have go-to polishes for like specific situations like this is my job interview polish or this is the polish I wear on my birthday but like in general I don't have a go-to. Right now I guess like I have a go-to vibe so I'm like very into the Christmassy stuff like this is Dom's wire wreaths so I call it wire wreaths so expensive but it's like wire wreaths so and then it's like got like four dollar signs. I got it in their advent calendar last year so many compliments it's so festive and then i've already decided that for christmas i'm gonna wear candy cane cutie by plus life lacquer it just looks like crushed up um uh, what do you call those candy canes so i literally just said candy cane how did i forget immediately that it looks like candy canes yeah so that's what i'm gonna wear for christmas so i'm in the christmas vibe so right now my go-to is christmas themed polishes so those were the questions and I did promise you guys some cringy Hillary lore at the end. So I've been getting, I don't know if you guys can see on my thumb, I get DMs kind of regularly, especially lately. And I don't know if it's because I've been doing the D-Stash video, so all you see is my hands, so people are finally starting to notice. But I have this mark on my thumb. It was a tattoo. It was just a tattoo. But people are always like, what is that? They always think, especially like just day-to-day -day people, they think I have pen on my uh, thumb. They also think I have pen in my like nose right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. That was because I got stabbed with a pencil in seventh grade. This is because <laughs> I made a questionable decision at 18 years old. I stand by that decision. I thought it was funny. I... I graduated high school in 2010. I am like a millennial and like the whole cool story bro thing was just everybody was saying cool story bro. I loved saying cool story bro. Thought it was funny. Uh, I thought it would be really funny if I got cool story bro <laughs> tattooed on my thumb so that whenever anybody said something stupid to me I'd be like cool story bro. And like I know like hands and feet exfoliate especially quickly so like those tattoos don't really last so I knew it would fade and be gone and it was in a place where it's like who's gonna I'm not gonna not get a job because I have this marking on my thumb nobody's gonna look at that and be like that's a tattoo she's fired um so I just was like I don't care that much I think it's gonna be funny and it was funny it was hilarious and it didn't hurt. You'd think a tattoo on the pad of your finger would be so painful. The most uncomfortable aspect of it was I had to like sit with my hand like angled like this so that the tattoo artist could tattoo it. Um, but yeah, that is what's on my hand. Uh, <laughs> I get that question a lot. And here's a picture of me in my peak millennial cringe form. Freshly 18, 
with the stupidest tattoo you've ever seen. So enjoy that. That was me. Can't believe, can't believe that's what I did. Yeah, I did have a corn cob pipe my freshman year of college. Ugh. Yeah, anyways, there was your cringy Hillary lore. There was my nail polish collection tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.